Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, time for another Metal Earth build, another one from the skies, but it doesn't have wings. I have a Graf Zeppelin, which is very interesting because it's solid on one side and open on the other, as you can see here. So, I wonder how complicated this will be. Well, let's open it up, see what's inside, and put it together. The Graf Zeppelin came to me already open, so hopefully nothing is damaged or missing. We have two metal sheets, put those to the side, and we have two pieces of paper for the instructions. It sounds complicated, but I see that there's nothing on the back of either sheet. So, open it up. Uh, fold this in half. We have one of the older tall metal or tall yellow sheets. And we have the usual introductory page with the line drawing and the Metal Earth logo and the website to go, web address to go to look at the 360 view. We have the legend blue circle when you see that at a connection point means to insert and bend a tab over 90 degrees. Green triangle means to insert and twist the tab 90 degrees. Pull and screw metal tab 90 degrees to tighten. The little needle nose pliers are helpful for assembly. And we have a picture of one of the parts and then pointing to the insertion tabs, fold lines, insertion holes so you know what they are. And then down here we have the two metal sheets. And nope. There we go. And there we go. So, shows you the part numbers, where the parts are, so you can find them on the sheets. Now, at the if you slide over to the next top quarter, you have the start of the assembly flowchart. Starting with part one. And, oh, it's telling you to fold and twist the propellers. And then down to part two, we've got all these pieces that come together. And you get to the middle of the page. We jump down to this bottom left quarter. And continue on. It's showing, inserting more stuff and stretching it out. And I think it may be more, I think it may be easier to understand once it's, once we're putting it together, but right now it's a little vague. And then over here, we go down, we add in all of these parts. And then, we go to the next sheet. It's interesting that they didn't print this on the back. And like before, I'm going to fold it in half. And we pick up where we left off before with inserting these parts. And then we have the other side curving it. And it only seems to be a rather jumpy direction. Not, it's kind of vague in how things go. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. But you just follow along as best you can. I sort of see what they're doing here, but it's not as clear as I'd like for it to be. Well, you have to fold and, and do some of these parts. Okay, I guess this is the outer skin, and this is showing you how to fold it, and then this is adding all parts to it. Okay, then that gets added to the side. Maybe it's just me, and I got a little confused. Once you get down here to the bottom, you're done. Let's talk tools. I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build. I have needle nose pliers. I have flat nose pliers. I have flush clippers. These are a must for me. They clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly. I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, a flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas. Also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. 
These come in one of the Iconics kits and I use them a lot. When it comes to shape and rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. We've peeked at the directions, we've got our metal sheets, we've got some tools, I've got a larger bar that hopefully will be the right size for shaping that sky to the skin or that side of the airship. Let's, uh, let's put it together. Trying to form the first motor and propeller seemed impossible without destroying the whole thing, but somehow I managed to do it. I had a lot of fun trying to get all three of these pieces lined up. I got all the parts together, then realized I had put them on in the wrong order. Be careful to line up everything the right way. I got one of the letters backwards. I think the one with the A on it and it came up to be a problem later. It might not need to be said, but all of these slots should line up before parts 5 through 17 will come together. The ones towards the end will not fit correctly if things don't line up.
Once I got a few cross frame pieces in, things didn't have to line up as much to fit. But it is still a good idea to get it lined up as much as you can.
It was here that I realized that I had put either part two or three backwards and that caused the engines on the one open side to be out of order. The forward engine is supposed to be higher than the one more to the rear. It was far too late at this point to go back in the build and fix it. And here we have the Graf Zeppelin. This is not one of my favorite models. It was a little bit difficult to build. It wasn't terrible, but it was a little tedious with this open side and trying to get everything aligned. And all of these centerpieces did not actually want to stay in place and aligned like they're supposed to. So that was quite a bit of challenge and you can kind of still see that a little bit here and there where they're not quite even. Now another thing I did is I mentioned I think I put one of the parts like part two or three on upside down not meaning to not realizing it and it ended up putting so that one of these engines is up high instead of down below like the other side. So that's a goof up on my part and by the time I realized what I'd done I was almost finished with the model. There was just no going back taking all these frame parts off and pulling it apart back to the beginning to try again. It is a fairly neat looking model. It you know with it being solid on one side and the framework on the other it's pretty cool looking. Knowing the mistakes that I made in building it kind of takes away from that a little bit. Maybe if I did it again I could do a better job. It's not a bad model and it's not a bad one to start with. It's a little challenging without being ridiculously so. So if you're wanting to build this, if you've already got it, if you're thinking I need to get started Watching this video may help you out a little bit and maybe yours will turn out the way it's supposed to better than mine. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.